Good evening and the warmest of virtual welcomes to the Norton Natchball School. My name is Ben Green and I'm the head teacher having joined the school just over a year ago in September 2019. Although I am your live host this evening, I hope that by the end you go away with a feeling that the real stars of the show are our students who you will see going about their daily business and that the qualities that you see in them, their maturity, their enthusiasm, their zest for and pride that they take in their learning and their school are qualities that you would want to see your son developing. In a moment, we will share with you a short film, a little under 15 minutes long, which aims to give you something of a tour of our facilities and an insight into a normal school day. Whilst you watch this, there is the facility to pose questions. Instructions are on the screen now. And once the film has ended, we will work our way through answering these as fully as we can. So if all of our preparations have gone to plan and the technical side uh, is all working, our film should now run. Good morning, and as you can tell, as I remove my mask, uh, we are operating under COVID restrictions. But nevertheless, the warmest of welcomes uh, on this Monday morning to the Norton Natural School. And of course, we are still um, at the moment unable to meet and greet you in person. And that's really frustrating, uh, I know, for you as parents and potential students, as it is for us, because seeing the school in action on a normal working day really is the best advert for the school uh, and the best demonstration of the qualities and the values that we've shared with you in our kind of prospectus information uh, and on our website already. But this morning, I'm very much hoping uh, that we are able to give you something of an insight into the day-to-day -day running of the school as we take you into some year seven classes and you see our students that have only been here five or six weeks uh, working in those lessons and you see their engagement with their learning and their subjects and the relationships that they've already established uh, with our teachers and other colleagues. So it is my pleasure to hand over to your tour guides uh, for the rest of this morning. And we do hope that you enjoy what you see and are interested in finding out more. Welcome to your tour. This is reception, which is where our in-school tours would start if you were here in person. It's your first view if you visit or phone NKS and our reception team will sign you in and guide you to where you need to go. Myself and a few other Year 7 students will be giving you your, your tour today, so follow me to our first subject area just a short distance away. There are seven computing labs around the school, two big rooms near reception, other near languages and the other four on the top floor near chemistry. The school is currently building a new digital learning centre at the front of the school, which will open next year, containing computing and science labs. Computer programming is essential for every 21st century citizen and Norton Natural is the lead school in the subject. With almost 20 years experience of teaching the subject up to A-level, let's take a look. You are going to get our lovely cat, Rotica. So you're going to turn him around, rotate him. Which one do you use for rotation? That's good. And rotate him fifth, that's it, good, 15 degrees. So you've got one scratch is pressed, he now rotates 15 degrees. This is perfect. This is exactly what you want him to do. Now, how would we change colour? How would you get Scratch to change colour? Which one is that one? Okay, so when you press the up arrow, he changes colour. Fantastic. This is the library. This is a huge resource of books, both fiction and non-fiction, magazines, journals for reference and to borrow from. It's also used a, as a place for older students to study between lessons. It's also the normal home of the student reception, first aid, and the SEN department. The English classrooms surround the library and I enjoy English lessons because we get to really understand our language and using examples from high quality literature understand how to creatively write our own stories. Lovely. Now in a moment I'm going to ask you to write about these settings. 
what sort of adjectives, what interesting adjectives could we use to help describe these settings? Dylan, let's let focus on this. So for the that one that I've put um, secluded and luscious. Lovely, secluded and luscious. Hi. Um reserved and beautiful. Reserved and beautiful. Now, in comparison, what words would we come up with to describe this? Antonio, have you got a word? Uh I'm happy. Unhabitable. Good. Disowned. Disowned. Uh, crime films. Crime films. Good. Yeah, it does look like the sort of place, as we said, that's not well looked after at the moment. At the Norton Natural, we specialise in languages, and you have the choice of two French and Spanish. I have chosen French. I particularly enjoy these lessons because our teacher is so kind and enthusiastic. At the moment, we are learning how to introduce ourselves and say how we are feeling. It is very enjoyable learning how to communicate with people in a different language. I am excited to travel again and to put my newfound knowledge into good use. Come on, say, Ilia. Oliver? Un cahier. Un cahier, très bien. Toute la classe, un cahier. Un cahier. Qu'est-ce que tu as dans ton sac? Dans mon sac, il y a six. Un livre. Un livre. Toute la classe. Un livre. Très bien. Muy bien. Make it even better by giving me a negative. No tengo un libro. Muy bien. Dini. Pregunta. ¿Qué hay en tu mochila? George. Uh, tengo un bolígrafo y... Monodero. Un monodero. Y ahora, Betsy, prove it. Venga. Un diccionario. Muy bien. Y ahora preguntamos, Melvin. Ask him a question. ¿Qué? 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 En tu mochila. Nathan. Nathan. If you love PE, Natural is the perfect school for you. The school offers a multitude of different sports for you to try, including football, rugby, athletics and cricket. We also have fantastic facilities, including an astroturf pitch, large playing fields, an indoor sports hall and gym. I absolutely love PE. It is one of my favourite lessons of the week. In Year 7, you will have two lessons, one indoor PE lesson and one outdoor games lesson. At the moment, we are learning how to play badminton. I was not too confident with the sport when I first joined, but I am thoroughly enjoying it now, and I am happy with the progress I have made over a short period of time. What other serve could we do? Say the forehand serve. Yep, backhand, and how do you look to do that? Let's be doing it in front of you here. That's right. So, strategy, strategy, tactics, you want it to go where the opposition isn't there. Yes, yeah, so that's what you're trying to do. And that's good. Right. We are now in front of the music classrooms. Music lessons are giving us the opportunity to use different instruments and discover secret talent hidden in each of us. We are now in front of the Natch Hatch. It is probably the best place in the school and not only we can enjoy lovely meals, but also spend time with our friends. We are now in the hall where we have drama lessons for those who love the theatre. I think it will be a great place to overcome your shyness and build up your confidence. So you're going to need to go to your chair in role as an experienced astronaut. And you've been brought here for a very special mission. Okay, now it's one piece suit. Okay, one piece suit. It goes from here. Put it right over the top, the first half, like that, okay, and then you'll notice it's a metal top. You need to click it to the left 
when it's in place, okay? Alright. Welcome to the art world. As we all have a bit of artist souls in us, I am sure you will enjoy these lessons. Discovering drawing, shading, and my favourite, drawing perspective upside down. You need to make it quite dense on your paper when you do your marks. And you need to make that paint that's in front of you really watery, okay? Which means there's a lot of water that needs to go on that paintbrush as well as the paint. Okay, off we go. This is the biology area with three of the nine science labs on three floors with physics and chemistry on the floors above. My favourite thing about science is that you get to learn about living things and how they work on the inside. DT have a set of classrooms and workshops full of exciting range of equipment. In DT, I really love that in the first term, you get to learn about how plastic is affecting the earth, then you get to make a plastic bag about trying to get people to stop using plastic bags, because a lot of them are one-time use. Okay, lovely. So some of them are really standing out. They've got the fine liner, they've got the colour. Excellent. Yeah, so you've got lots of lots of phrases on your bags that you're going to put on your, onto your designs. Okay, fantastic. Put those down. Right. Um, William, did you take some of your inspiration from your moon board? Yeah. So yeah. The first one is based off of this, this um, picture, mm -hmm. which I tried to attempt to make it more worth my yeah. Fantastic. And what does the text say? Geography focuses on the study how people interact with the world and the environment. My favourite thing in geography so far is that you get to learn about human causes, physical changes and environmental changes and different ways to categorise them. RE gives us a chance to study and understand different cultures, looking at the differences and also the similarities between different, different beliefs around the world. History gives us an insight to, into the people who came before us, the decisions they made and their consequences. In history so far this year, we have been studying the reasons why William the Conqueror won the Battle of Hastings. Maths is essential for good numeracy and key to understanding science, engineering and economics. We have really been pushed with our number skills in our first term and started to get to know how to present our mathematics properly when answering complex problems. And what I want you to do, I'm going to put up a, a sequence on the board and I want you to raise your right hand if you think it's linear and to raise your left hand if you think it's non-linear. Okay, you think it's linear? Who wants to explain why it's linear? Oscar, can you explain why it's linear? Um, because it goes up from the same amount. It's going up by the same amount each time. Good. Linear or non-linear? Why do you think it's non-linear? Um, it's going up by a different amount of time. It's going up by three, then five, okay. then Thank you for watching. If you've got any more questions, then please do not hesitate to contact us at information at nks.kent.sch.uk. Hello, my name is Tarski Brown and I'm head boy at Knowlton Natural. I've attended the school for almost seven years and has provided me with some of the best memories of my life. NKS has a very strong community and it helps you throughout your time. From joining in year seven, the community at NKS allowed me to find friends. I found friends through the form system at NKS, which works so well when joining in year seven. Forms create a sense of togetherness between strangers, which allows friendships to grow. 
I found friends this way in Year 7 who are still my friends now and I hope to keep those friends for the rest of my life. The community in Nashville has always been there for me with amazing student support, staff within the school. Throughout my time I've always been able to find help or member of a staff that always wants to help me with the problem that I have. My experience at NKS has also been impacted by the strong ethos of, ac of academic achievement. Every single teacher at NKS wants, wants every student to succeed and constantly support students to reach their potential. I found this in my GCSE subjects and my A-level subjects, with teachers setting goals and pushing students. But I've also found that academic success, teachers are aware and proactive in maintaining students' mental health. So that is healthy, therefore students can set, can have the right mindset, mindset to learn and achieve those goals. Thank you for listening. I hope you choose NKS because it will provide an amazing education and experience for students. Hello everyone. It's safe to say that these are very unusual times that we are currently living in. But life does need to get back on track and so the time has come for you to make the decision about which secondary school you wish to further your education with. Even though I personally didn't start my journey with Norton Nashville when I was in Year 7, I do remember the uncertainties and fears that arose from joining a new school, especially as I was the only one from my primary school to start a completely new school on my own, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. This is going to be one of the biggest decisions that you are going to make, and choosing Norton Nashville is a choice for a better future. Since I started last year, Norton Nashville has given me many new op opportunities to grow and develop myself into the person I am today. All the teachers here are very friendly and always put the needs of their students first, which is exactly what you want from a school. My time at Norton and Nashville has given me many tools and life skills that I would take with me on my journey to university. And even though I'm not personally there to meet and greet you all, or even shake some of your parents' hands, I want you all to know that your children will have the warmest welcome and would be ever so lucky if you choose to join the Norton Nashville family. But I wish you all the best, wherever life takes you. The world is your oyster, and who knows what the future holds. I do hope that you enjoyed that snapshot into uh, our daily life at Norton Nashville. Uh, and as I, it goes without saying um, that I'm incredibly proud of all of our students, but especially uh, those year seven students uh, that were involved there. Uh, they've only been here, remember, six weeks. And, and that, that pride is only tempered by the frustration that you've not been able to meet them in person. Um, so we, we, we have uh, some, uh, we have at least one question uh, that's come in and I'll just remind you uh, that there is the facility there to uh, load any questions which we will endeavour to answer. The question uh, that we've received thus far is about how languages work um, and the questioner asks um, uh, whether the students choose the language when they apply and that dictates their tutor group and essentially that is correct and it's still the case that once a place is confirmed uh, and that will obviously be in March, we will then be in contact uh, with all of those students, uh, families who've been offered a place and ask them to indicate the language that they would want their son to follow. Uh, and next year that will either be French or Spanish. And then the students will be organised according to those language preferences uh, in, their, in their tutor groups. So I hope that that um, confirms your recollection um, in terms of the questioner there. Um, the next question that has appeared is about um, clubs at the school and sports teams, um, which, which is timely. Um, the, um, in terms of in the last week, we are thrilled that we've just been able to play our first school fixtures uh, this year. Obviously, with the return in September, uh, we had uh, lots of extracurricular uh, and sporting kind of endeavours were initially on hold um, and these uh, have begun. We, we, we've got practices taking place. We've got uh, rugby, uh, soccer and hockey are our main winter sports. We also participate in um, in cross country events with, with other schools and then in the summer uh, and of course the we, we lost the summer last year. Our usual sports would be um, athletics, uh, cricket um, and tennis uh, and then obviously we do indoor sports in terms of gym and badminton and so forth. Uh, and last week we played our first set of fixtures uh, and I'm pleased to say that we won three, uh, drew two and lost only the one. So hopefully uh, we are, uh, we will have a rich sporting uh, year ahead now that those fixtures have uh, started to take place again. Uh, so there's a whole range uh, of extracurricular um, clubs across school and lots of sports as well. Uh, question there. 
um, about how to apply to Norton Natchball School uh, if you reside outside of Kent. Uh, and that will involve uh, putting Norton Natchball as a preference on your local authority uh, application form, um, as well as liaising with them in terms of uh, how to sit the test, um, the entry test as an out of county, um, or as an out of county applicant. Uh, so just moving uh, moving through there, linked to that, we do have a small uh, small number of children that come from uh, East Sussex, um, particularly uh, on the train line that comes up from Hastings uh, and into uh, into Ashford uh, from that direction. So we do have some students that come in um, every day uh, from East Sussex. Not a, not a great deal, but there'll be a small number uh, in every year group. Uh, the next question um, asks about uh, how student support works. Um, in the first instance, the key person uh, with each year group, uh, each year group has a student support manager, and this is a non-teaching member of staff uh, who works with that year group and is available to that year group all day and every day. Um, and that particularly um, is the case because they are non-teaching members of staff, so they don't have uh, lesson commitments that pull them away uh, during the day. And the student support manager, who is in charge of each year group is the first port of call uh, for any query that parents have, um, any information that parents have, if a student's absent, uh, that goes to the student support manager. And the student support manager very quickly um, builds up a, uh, a, a detailed and sort of strong knowledge of the year group and the individuals in there and develops strong relationships with the families, particularly uh, in those circumstances uh, where there are you know, the, the inevitable ups and downs that, that, that one might anticipate at some point um, over seven years of secondary education. Um, so, th so the student support manager is the kind of the, 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 the pastoral key uh, within any year group. And then depending on the support that a student might need, the student support manager may then pull in um, senior members of staff if that's appropriate. Uh, it could be to do with uh, if, it's, if, it, if it's an academic concern, would liaise with the subject teacher and the subject leader. Um, if it's in relation to um, additional educational needs uh, or any kind of emotional um, uh, health and wellbeing issues, uh, then the student support manager would liaise with uh, Mr. Utin, who's our, um, who's our SENCO and in charge of additional educational needs. Um, and he would work with the student support manager to ensure um, that those, those needs can be supported and addressed, and he would also liaise uh, with staff in that regard. Um, so, I, so I hope that that, um, that, that answers that question. Um, it's you, the next question that I've got is asking about whether you can request to be in a form uh, with people from your current school. Um, you, you can certainly um, liaise with us, and when it comes to uh, transition, one of the um, student support managers um, Mrs. Parsonage, who um, oversees Year Seven, she one of her roles is also to oversee uh, transition, um, and so you can certainly request that and, and and perhaps give some indication if there are particular reasons uh, for that um, in terms of students from the same school being in the same form group. We don't, as a by habit, um, you know, necessarily create form groups that have all the students from particular schools in. Um, you know, we really do like to. Uh, sort of you know mix things up and create uh, new relationships and so forth uh, but I think if there's a particular reason and I can uh, I can think of some examples where that might be the case um, where we have placed people in a form group together uh, for, because there's a, there's a very particular need um, or reason for that so that would be an issue to liaise with us and Mrs Parsonage on when it comes to uh, transition. Uh, the, the, the next uh, question that I've got there links back to a question I answered earlier in terms of uh, support for students with uh, special educational needs. Uh, so we have, as I've uh, mentioned before, our SENCO, Mr. Artin, who leads the Additional Educational Needs Department, and they've got a dedicated base, uh, which is just off of our library uh, and a number of LSAs to provide both in-class support for students, uh, depending on uh, their, their, their needs and requirements, uh, and then also uh, there are occasions where students go to the AEN base uh, for support and to do work and so forth. And it really is a case of very much depending on the particular needs um, of, uh, of, of, of the young person. 
Um, and just to be just to remind you there, the, the member of staff responsible for that uh, is Mr. Uttin. Um, and so if you do have any queries in relation to uh, the support we provide for students with additional educational needs, uh, then do contact Mr. Uttin at the school. He'll be only too happy to, to help. Um, the next question um, is uh, asks when, when girls join the school. Um, so our sixth form is co-educational. So year seven to 11 is all boys. Uh, and then we have um, around about 25 to 30 percent of our sixth form are girls that join us from other local schools uh, in year 12. So uh, we've, we've got boys in all seven year groups and girls in year 12 and 13. Uh, and as I said there, the proportion of girls in the sixth form is around 25 uh, to 30 uh, percent. There's a there's a follow up or a, a separate question about uh, food allergies. Uh, and again, if a student has food allergies, um, then again, the, the key person to uh, inform would be the student support manager who would then um, relate that information to all relevant colleagues, including the canteen, if that were the case, uh, and any particular departments where, uh, de depending on the specific nature um, of, the, uh, of the allergy in question. Uh, so moving on to uh, the next question that I've got on my screen. Um, is uh, asking when students start their GCSE courses. Um, and we start our students on their GCSE programmes in year nine. So the options are taken uh, at the end of year eight. Um, and the reasons for doing that is that that enables us over three years of study to maintain a breadth uh, a, a, and a range of courses so that our students are uh, taking 10 or 11 GCSEs by the end. Uh, of year 11 and it also ensures that we have the time to really lay the solid foundations that are required to enable students to develop the higher level thinking analysis and evaluation to secure the top grades uh, and certainly what we've seen in the last few years since we introduced uh, or we made that change to students starting their GCSE courses uh, in year nine uh, is, is, is really very pleasing insofar as both our GCSE results um, have moved in a positive direction and also the number of students taking uh, the, the art subjects, the creative subjects um, has increased. So we're very pleased uh, that that has been the case and that bucks the trend uh, across, uh, across the nation. Uh, there's a separate question there asking about um, how to apply to join the school uh, in year nine. Um, and, and, and the answer to this would apply uh, to any year group outside of year seven. Uh, we do our, we do uh, run and coordinate our own in year admissions. And so that's a case of contacting the school uh, to establish whether there are any places uh, in a particular year group. And at that point, we would uh, liaise with the parents about uh, sitting the, uh, the in year test. Um, so they, it, it is possible to join the school uh, in a different year group. You contact the school, we establish whether or not there are places in the year, uh, and then we run and administer an in-year test. Uh, somebody's asked a very specific question about how many students apply to Oxford, Cambridge Universities or medicine in a typical year. Uh, and I can answer that question quite precisely because the, uh, the, the, the deadline for those early admissions uh, was last week, the 15th of October, uh, and we have 15 students uh, who are making those early applications uh, this year. And that would be broadly uh, typical in terms of the uh, applying to Oxbridge, uh, medicine, veterinary and dentistry courses. Uh, the next question um, that I've got there is asking how students are supported if they are struggling in any particular subject outside uh, of lessons. Uh, so we have, um, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, the sort of pastoral oversight in any year group, which is provided uh, by our student support managers. And each year group also has uh, an academic uh, role. Uh, and the, the, these, these colleagues are called achievement leaders. And so each year group has an achievement leader attached to them. They are a teaching member of staff who have a responsibility to monitor and intervene and support students uh, and their academic progress in that year group. Uh, and so they will have a very uh, close oversight 
and they will monitor uh, very closely uh, students' academic progress through the year. They will look at the um, attainment grades that they're achieving. They will look at their, um, we, we, when we carry out internal assessments, we have a category called attitude to learning. Uh, and then we also um, record how students are doing with their homework. And our achievement leaders um, will monitor that information and they will work then with students that might be struggling um, across subjects. Uh, and, and that's particularly where the achievement leader um, comes into their own, where a student might be struggling in three or four subjects. Um, um, or if a student is struggling in only one subject, it would tend to be the in the uh, in the realm of the subject leader uh, to be uh, engaging with that student and their family to understand what the issues might be. Um, and then whether that's a subject leader or the achievement leader, it then becomes a case of trying to identify uh, what the issue is and to take the appropriate um, steps to intervene. Uh, and, and, and sometimes uh, that, that can be a period um, on, 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 on academic reports uh, where we look to monitor what the student is doing uh, and try to identify uh, their successes as well as the challenges um, and any one of a range um, of different strategies to um, support students. That could be um, some additional um, support, some additional work, um, at the moment, it's quite difficult to do that at lunch times, but hopefully uh, by this time next year, uh, we will be able to do sort of lunchtime um, support and sessions in a way that we're unable to do this year. Uh, the question asking uh, whether if the if a child passes 11 plus test and Natchball is put down as first choice, does it mean he's guaranteed a place at Natchball? Um, I think technically um, it probably doesn't absolutely guarantee that, but in reality, um, I, I'm confident that that would be the case. In terms of our entry criteria, um, then the admissions policy, and there's a uh, set of priorities there um, if, if in the event that we are oversubscribed. The reality is though, um, certainly when you look back over uh, the over recent years, that if your child passes the 11 plus test, and Natchball is down as first choice, um, then it is very, very likely that he will get a place um, at, at, at the school. Apologies for uh, losing my thread there. Um, what is lunch like at the school? Um, where we sit, etc. Um, well, lunch this year is very different um, to previous years because this year we've introduced, uh, in order to respond to um, the, the, the the challenges posed by coronavirus. Uh, we have introduced a staggered lunch and each year group is going down uh, in a 10 minute slot to uh, collect their lunch from the canteen uh, and then to take that lunch either back to their year group zone or to uh, or to eat outside. So that's a lot quieter um, and, and a lot calmer, I have to say, um, than in previous years. Um, under normal circumstances, uh, again, the year groups would come down uh, at slightly different times, but they would then sit and each eat their lunch in the canteen. So it would be uh, a busier um, and to be honest, a slightly noisier um, uh, set of circumstances. What we what we will look forward to um, when the, uh, the threat of coronavirus um, hopefully has been lifted is looking to reframe and shape things going forward. And I think that's likely to be a combination of going back to uh, things how they were, but also perhaps keeping uh, some of the new changes that we've introduced this year. Um, so these, I, I hope I've given you uh, some idea there in terms of um, what lunch is like. Uh, somebody asking uh, about uh, sort of food tech as an option, um, and unfortunately that is not uh, an option that we um, are able to provide uh, in our current uh, curriculum framework. The next question is about induction activities that we would potentially be planning uh, for the next intake in 2021. Well, I very, very much hope that come uh, next summer we are able to carry out induction in our normal way, which is physically with the students in school for two days uh, in early July uh, and, a, and, a, and a parents information evening as well in July um, leading up to the end of the school year uh, before students start in September. And on those induction days, uh, we run taster sessions uh, and various activities in terms of sort of um, to help students orientate themselves around the school. Uh, and of course, uh, this summer just gone, we were unable to uh, unable to do that and we had to um, work together uh, to produce some remote induction activities. Um, but we very much hope 
um, that that is something that we can return to being able to do physically in person um, over two days in July next summer. So uh, the next question is asking about the size of our year seven. So our published admissions number uh, is 210. Uh, and indeed, that is the uh, the number of students or just shy that we have in both year seven and eight. Uh, and we very much hope that that is the size of our year groups uh, going forward. Um, so and, and linked to that, they are put into uh, one of seven houses. So um, in, in a year group of 210, uh, there would be seven form groups, one form group for each house. So hopefully very quickly um, students uh, get a sense of belonging to uh, not just the whole school community, uh, but a, a strong identification with their year group and through their form group with their uh, with their houses as well. And then we have a number of house competitions uh, that take place through the year that lead to the awarding um, of the house trophy at the end of the year. Um, so I think I've answered uh, the question about how many classes per year group. Uh, yes, we do have um, over subscription uh, criteria uh, that relates to um, uh, pro the proximity that people live to the school, uh, whether or not they have any siblings, uh, whether there are any additional um, educational needs uh, and so forth. And, and, and that's detailed in our admissions policy that is on our website. Um, so question asking about how uh, students are challenged and stretched if they are ever uh, or, or when they are doing well um, in particular subjects. And we um, all subjects uh, build into their curriculum planning um, activities that are designed um, to enable all, all students to access them, uh, but then at the higher level to really develop higher order uh, thinking, analysis, evaluation, synthesizing knowledge and understanding with previous topics um, and, and, and enabling students to go off uh, independently um, to really stretch and challenge themselves. And alongside this, uh, we have a colleague that has a responsibility um, for uh, developing uh, and extending um, our pedagogy for uh, our most able students and also coordinates and runs uh, activities um, for uh, students that really want to stretch themselves um, outside a lesson. So, for example, uh, we have uh, a number of students, uh, student led uh, societies that are coordinated um, by our more able leader. Um, and one of those and th th that's particularly prominent is our medical society. Um, now, at the top end of the school, 11 years, 11, 12 and 13, our medical society is really geared to support those students that uh, aspire to um, pursue medicine in higher education. Uh, and, and although that is the, the, the main aim, the medical society is open uh, to students in all year groups. And I, uh, one of my uh, fondest memories um, of last year is attending a medical society event where two year seven students were given a presentation on some work that they had done independently on how the body fights disease. Um, and I was invited along uh, to this session. And at the end of it, um, I, I have to confess as a humble historian, um, I, I, I struggled to follow much of the content um, that these year seven students had been talking about. But at the end of it, the, uh, the two year 13 students who were there, who both have gone on to study medicine, they said that the level um, of the presentation that the year seven students had just gone through uh, was comfortably a level if not beyond. So um, I hope that gives some indication um, of the ways in which we try to ensure that our most able students um, have opportunities to really challenge and stretch themselves. A uh, question asking about uh, the uh, sixth form where the groups, uh, students are grouped by ability um, and, and, and essentially the, uh, the answer to that question in terms of the sixth form is no, um, because um, the, the, the number of students studying any given subject um, are unlikely to even give us that facility, um, even if we uh, wanted and were able to do it. Um, to get to the sixth form, students have um, passed and secured the GCSE grades that meet the entry criteria. Um, so, so, so therefore they are in. Um, so I have mentioned sports um, as part of our extracurricular program. Um, and another question has, has, has asked about extracurricular activities um, uh, beyond, uh, beyond the sports. There are, there are 
a number of music ensemblers and, and, and that's been one of the joys of the last few weeks uh, to hear music practice beginning again. Uh, we've got a strong record uh, in terms of debating um, and taking part in various uh, competitions in, uh, in each of the subject disciplines. Um, and so there's a rich uh, range of extracurricular activities in terms of uh, across all year groups and indeed the sixth form. Uh, one of the highlights, um, not sure that we will be able to do it in our usual form this year, uh, but is a student panto, uh, which is written and produced uh, by uh, sixth form students uh, and then starring students across all year groups as well as other sort of uh, dramatic performances um, as well. So there's a tremendous uh, range um, on offer. Uh, next question asks about oversubscription. Um, so this year um, we are on our pan in year seven, 210. Um, and so you know, it, it, this year certainly we were oversubscribed. Um, and as uh, Ashford continues to grow and as the school um, I hope goes from strength to strength, um, then I hope that that in a way becomes a problem um, that, that, that we do have to uh, deal with and respond to. Um, so historically uh, in recent years, um, the school has not been oversubscribed, but we are reaching uh, and have reached that point this year. Question asking about the shape of the school day in particular timings. Again, that is something else that we've, uh, we've had to change this year, um, but essentially the school day uh, starts at 8.45 uh, and this year um, it finishes with a sort of staggered end to the day, um, uh, ending at 3.15 uh, for years 7 and 8, 3.20 for uh, years 9 and 10, and then 3.25 for uh, 11, 12 and 13. Uh, our usual finishing time um, with a uh, with a slightly longer lunch uh, pre-COVID uh, would be 3.30. So broadly speaking, uh, whether it's this year or last year, um, our school day starts 8.45 uh, and is finishing this year um, between 3.15 and 3.25. Um, Pre-COVID it would have finished at 3.30. There's uh, a question asking about uh, IT and computing. Um, so our curriculum now um, is that, that there is no IT um, taught as a discrete subject. It is all about computing all the way through uh, from year seven um, through to GCSE uh, and A level uh, and computing um, is an option that many students do take at GCSE uh, and A level uh, and our colleagues in the computing department are local lead teachers. Um, and supporting a number of other schools and colleagues uh, across the region in developing their computing. So it is a, 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 a strong subject and a strength uh, across all year groups. Notwithstanding that, and, I, uh, and my comment that IT is no longer taught as a discrete subject, uh, IT is used across all subjects um, and all subjects will book into IT suites uh, at various stages um, to complete elements of their curriculum. A question asking about uh, whether child league tables um, are displayed in class, um, to which my answer would be um, not on my watch. Um, the, I, I think it's fair to say that students um, are, I mean, one of the conversations that inevitably, inevitably takes place when work is handed back is students will be asking each other um, how they have done. Um, and that perhaps is human nature. Um, it certainly isn't something that the, um, in, in terms of comparing students publicly against each other in class, that certainly isn't something um, that teachers uh, would do or be expected to do. The key really when a student gets uh, an assessment or a piece of work back is for them to understand how they've done what they've done. Um, if they've done well, they should be congratulated, they should be pleased with that. Um, but they really importantly need to understand why it is that they've done so well um, so that they can repeat that and build on that next time. If a student hasn't done so well um, and, and it's inevitable that there will be some disappointment and frustration in that regard, um, but it's really important that the student does not see that as a judgment of themselves. It is an assessment of one piece of work. And the really important thing going forward is that that student understands what they need to do and how they can improve on that uh, that piece of work next time. 
uh, question uh, asking about how much homework per day is issued. It will vary um, and, 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 and gradually increase as students go um, up the school, um, but certainly um, students would expect um, in year seven and eight, um, somewhere between, I would imagine, uh, an hour to two hours of homework per day. Obviously, um, that depends on, uh, on, on, on the timetable. Uh, series of questions um, asking about uh, uh, the uh, advantages of being in a boys school only. Um, I think um, one of the advantages um, of a boys school uh, across years seven to 11 uh, is a opportunity for um, boys to uh, work without uh, the, uh, the distraction, um, the distractions that sometimes there are in a co-ed school um, in terms of um, adolescent relationships and so forth. Um, so, so we certainly are freed uh, in that regard of that distract of, of those distractions and uh, perhaps some sort of social expectations in that regard. And, and at the same time, are able to work with the students um, and, and in terms of challenging, um, perhaps um, sort of um, some sort of stereotypical um, attitudes that there are towards masculinity, um, uh, sometimes expressed as toxic masculinity, um, and to really um, just you know, focus on encouraging students to uh, you know, de develop their, 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 their academic and, and their wider passions um, with, with, without any of those uh, sort of distractions and to develop a healthy and positive um, view of masculinity. Um, we, we, we have clear bullying policies and we repeatedly um, emphasise uh, that, that, that bullying is not acceptable at school um, in, in response to a question about um, our bullying policies and the, uh, the, 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 the approach is a sort of twin track approach to, uh, to, to support uh, any victim of bullying um, and to address uh, with the bully, to sanction accordingly, but at the same time to try to make sure that we are unpicking any issues uh, in terms of the causation of that. Um, question asks whether there is bullying at all. Um, well, uh, any head that says there's no bullying at their school, um, I think is uh, either being misleading uh, or is, is, is deluded. Um, so there are instances um, uh, infrequently, um, there are occasions where bullying is an issue that we have to deal with um, and it is dealt with in accordance with uh, those policies, uh, those policies. Uh, next question um, asks about school trips, uh, which of course um, have been a, a, a victim of COVID. Um, so at the moment we, uh, we don't have any school trips, which is uh, extremely disappointing, um, but under normal circumstances, uh, there are a number of trips that run through the year. So, for example, uh, we, we run um, uh, trips locally to reward students that have excelled um, over the term. So there's bowling trips um, and there is um, some sort of, um, and, and you'll be able to tell that I've managed to avoid this trip so far, uh, there is some sort of local um, trampolining um, activity um, that the, the, the students uh, seem to enjoy. That's possibly beyond me now. Um, there are other trips on a, on a subject by subject basis. I've mentioned competitions uh, that some subjects are involved in. Uh, the, the geographers go out and do various uh, elements of kind of field work uh, to get a sense of what they're doing. There are history trips to uh, local historical sites uh, and so forth. And there are other enrichment trips um, across uh, across different subjects. At the end of year eight, uh, there historically um, has been a, a, a trip to Spain uh, where the, uh, the, the linguists have gone for a week at the end of the summer term uh, in year eight. And, and we very much look forward uh, once we uh, have moved through this, uh, this phase of the global pandemic of being able to restart our, uh, our, our program of school trips. A uh, question asked about support for children who come from uh, small schools and don't know anyone when they first um, arrive um, and there are a number of things um, uh, that, that we do there. Um, so in that transition program that I mentioned earlier in terms of Mrs Parsonage uh, and her involvement, um, she works very closely and liaises uh, with the schools that are only sending us uh, one student uh, and indeed the families um, to, uh, to, to, to build the confidence, to answer any questions, uh, to invite them in 
uh, in addition to any transition days we're doing with the whole year group to ensure that those students that are coming, uh, they're the only student coming uh, from their school, um, have as you know, have as much confidence as possible, can make some connections before uh, before they come. Uh, question asking about what PE is like at Norton Natchball. Well, I hope the uh, the, the, the film um, with the short clip of some badminton taking place there um, gave you an indication um, there that it's uh, you know that it's there's a lot of expertise going in there in terms of guiding students and developing them in the various techniques uh, involved in any given sport. Um, the in the video clip, the the importance of strategy uh, was also mentioned, uh, but then above all else. Uh, what the students most enjoy, of course, is then actually being able to physically and practically um, get involved uh, and then try out those new techniques in whatever uh, the sport is, whether that's in uh, winter or, or the summer. Above all else, um, you know, yes, we compete at a high level um, in, 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 in various sports, but within PE lessons, I hope that all students uh, get a sense of the uh, of the health benefits and the value of being physically active uh, and at whatever level they are performing at a sense of uh, you know achievement and improvement um, as they engage in uh, in physical activity. Uh, and the next and uh, as, as it stands, the, uh, the, the, the final question uh, that we have there is how often and in what way are parents informed um, of their son's progress? So there will be three uh, points in the year uh, where there will be um, either data coming home in terms of uh, assessments uh, that have been carried out in school um, or uh, in terms of exams that have taken place at the end of the school year. Um, so there'll be there'll be two sets of assessment data uh, that come home uh, and one of those will have a written report uh, and then at a third point in the year there will be a parents uh, evening where parents come in and spend five minutes uh, talking uh, with, with, with the subject teachers about how their son is doing. So those three different points where um, we, we are updating you on uh, your son's progress are then spread out over the course of the year, uh, reflecting, if you like, the old three term structure um, of the school year. And, and, and in the meantime, in between that, um, if uh, there are any concerns or your son um, you know, really stands out because he's done some excellent work, uh, then the school would be in contact. Um, so we have a system uh, whereby um, any uh, behaviour points that um, are, are awarded in terms of concerns um, about any issues and indeed any praise, uh, that these are recorded and uh, they are conveyed home electronically as well. So um, you know, parents are, um, I hope, feel that they are kept fully up to date uh, with both any concerns, but also uh, particular achievements um, as well. Uh, the next uh, question asks uh, whether there is a, a parents association uh, to which the answer um, is, is, is that there is. Um, it's um, a, 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 again, like many things, um, it's, it, it's really been very difficult over the last seven or eight months um, uh, and, and, and have suffered many challenges with COVID um, and not to mention um, in, in, in recent years the, uh, uh, you know, the challenges in terms of fundraising uh, and one of the events that was um, called off um, during, um, the, during lockdown uh, was the, uh, the, P the Parents Association quiz night um, where um, that would have been another opportunity um, for parents to engage with me live, um, not quite in this formal setting, um, but as quiz master. Uh, and the, the, the next question asks about uh, student involvement in volunteering uh, and charity and there are uh, a number of things and it's an area that I'm very keen um, that we develop further in the, uh, the months and years to come that all of our students uh, do get involved in community activities, whether that's volunteering, charity fundraising uh, and so forth. And there's a whole range um, of events that we already have. Um, that, that, that make a contribution there that we will look to continue to grow. So uh, we have a number of non-uniform days uh, during the school year, often linked with uh, things like comic relief and um, uh, children in need and those big national campaigns, um, often linked um, uh, on different occasions with uh, causes that are close to the school's heart. Um, so, you know, if, um, you know, the, 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 there may be somebody in school 
um, that has you know, been involved with a particular charity, uh, then we would look to support them uh, as well. And uh, in the run up to Christmas, um, and I hope that we'll be able to do that this year, um, our sixth form students um, coordinate and collect um, uh, food donations and they make up hampers that are taken uh, to local care homes. Um, so as I say, there's a, there, there's a range of volunteering and charitable events um, that one would hope um, over the years to come that we can develop uh, still further. So I think oh, there's another. What do I see as the main or key challenges facing uh, Norton Natural School? Um, well, in the uh, in, in the short term, it is continuing um, to respond to and navigate uh, the, uh, the, the, the the current uh, the current challenges that we face. Um, and, and there's no doubt, I think it's evident um, that that will be um, uh, it, 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 the the winter months are going to be testing uh, for us all. Um, but notwithstanding that, actually, I think it is to uh, continue to develop our approaches to teaching and learning so that we are ensuring that our students are stretched and challenged um, and, and, and beyond perhaps what even they, the targets that they uh, set for themselves, um, that they continue to achieve uh, fantastic uh, results in external examinations. Uh, at GCSE and at A level, but actually that the uh, the students and parents see that exam results, important as they are, are not the sole ingredient of a outstanding education, and that our our, our students leave school um, with a holistic education, um, able to go out into the world confident in their abilities, knowing that they've got good exam results, um, that they can aspire. Um, and, and set their goals high and that they can go out and achieve those and they can make their difference. But at the same time, knowing that important as it is what they do, that it is just as important how they do it. And yes, they will aim high. Yes, they will achieve great things, but they won't trample on people in order to get there. And a question asking about uh, DFV or CCF style opportunities, and, our, and, and, and the answer to that is yes. Our main vehicle um, is uh, uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award, um, and we have COVID permitting uh, a number of students every year completing uh, the silver and gold awards. So I do hope, um, notwithstanding losing my thread about halfway through. Uh, when we were talking about admissions, I do hope uh, that in answering those questions, um, we've been able to give you um, a really good idea um, of the school, um, of you know, where we are um, and, 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 and how we are, um, as well as who we are and what we do on a day to day basis. So in closing, I trust that you have found this to be a useful and informative session. As I said earlier, although I have been the host, uh, the students are, I think, the best demonstration of who we are and how we operate, supported and inspired by a dedicated and creative team of colleagues. And I hope that this evening has given you some insight of this. I very much look forward at some point to being able to welcome you in person to the school and to the time when your son is in those lessons and perhaps proudly hosting one of our tours. In the meantime, do not hesitate to send any further questions in to the school uh, and we will make sure that there's a, the email address uh, is available at the end. It's information at nks.kent.sch.uk. Thank you for spending your time with us this evening and best wishes for the journey ahead from primary to secondary school. Good night.